Hi, welcome to this week's edition of the Swedish Startup Sessions. And I'm here with super entrepreneur Ted Valentin, who is talking about his new startup and the startup climate in Sweden, which is really rocking right now. So stay tuned for some more. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. Sweden. Fly overseas, claim use a G, please believe this ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa, bitch, you'll be thanking God. This is Sweden. Stop lying to all, you ain't struggling at all. This is Sweden. You ain't packing gas, you ain't hard, you ain't living in the garage. This is Sweden. Fly overseas, claim use a G, please believe this ain't Sweden. Witness a massacre in Middle East to Africa, bitch, you'll be thanking God. This this is the Swedish Startup Sessions. Welcome back to the Swedish Startup Sessions and I'm here with Ted Valentin. And for anybody who is following the Swedish startup scene, you hardly need an introduction. But anyway, who are you? What's your background? Uh, well, I um, quickly... Well, I'm an internet entrepreneur from, from Stockholm and... Um, I, uh, I've been developing websites for since 2003 or something like that. I started out studying marketing and started coding as a, as a hobby. And uh, my hobby grew into, into, uh, into like, uh, yeah, a real business. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, at the moment, I'm, I, have a, I have a startup called Tripbirds, and we're seven people. Uh, yeah. And you all actually uh, was the, the root of the the Swedish expression gröt entrepreneur or porridge entrepreneur. Porridge entrepreneur, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why was that? Uh, well, um, so I had a like um, a philosophy um, that was that I try to do everything, like everything myself. Uh, uh, like, so I, I, I started programming and I, I like, the first business that I started was was uh, I was selling magazine subscriptions on, on the web, uh, and I started that in 2003, 2004, and sold it in 2007. Uh, and when I sold it, I was still I sold it for around like two million two million dollars. Mm -hmm. And when I when I did, I was still working from cafes, and uh, like the only sort of hardware I had was was a used laptop, and uh, yeah, like no no employees or mm -hmm. anything like that. So, and then I kept working like that for, for another few years, mm -hmm. uh, up until last year, actually. And I developed, like, a bunch of uh, maps, like, review sites yeah. in Sweden, like the sushi map and the hotel map and the restaurant map. And uh, kept, like, working from cafes, like, doing mm -hmm. everything myself self and keeping, keeping the, the, the costs, like, to a minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then uh, there was this article in, in Dagens Industry, which is, like, a the main uh, business daily in, yeah. in Sweden, and they, they, uh, there were some other people who, who uh, were working like that, you know, and uh, they, they coined this, yeah, term like the porridge entrepreneurs. Like, uh, I don't know what they mean by that. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it's like we only need. I guess like you don't need venture capital. Yeah. Like you can start your business. Like you eat porridge for a, you know a few months, and then you can start your business. I hope that it doesn't mean like you don't earn em enough money that <laughs> so you can only eat porridge for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think that everybody was quite surprised when you suddenly um, started Trip Birds with other people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, and, but and how, how <clears throat> did that come about? Well, uh, I mean, for me privately, I, I felt that. Like I'm, I'm getting older. Like um, you know, and uh, it was super appealing uh, a few years, like when I was when I was younger, to be able to work from anywhere in the world, just mm. like with my laptop, and like sort of, you know, I can work for three three weeks in San Francisco, and then work for a few weeks in Croatia, and then work for a few weeks in in South Korea, and just like that kind of you know freedom. Yeah. But then when you get like the family and you get kids and stuff, then you still have to work like regular hours and mm. you have to work like in Stockholm and then it's like it gets a bit after a while it feels like well I might as well I mean have an office and work with some yeah it, it, yeah, it might be fun yeah so um, 
Yeah. Yeah, that's the way. So, so how, how did the trick birds come about? I, I get, got the feeling when I, I read some art, uh, blog post about you that you more or less sort of stumbled on on the concept. Is that yeah, correct? So, so, um, yeah, so Trippert's is a site where you can get travel recommendations uh, from friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, where should I start? So I, as I said, I have been doing like a lot of, the, lot of other uh, review websites mm -hmm. in the past, like hotel reviews yeah. and restaurant reviews. So I have uh, quite a bit of experience from, from that sort of how to make money on, on that kind of stuff and uh, what works and what doesn't and uh, and then what happened like I, I met uh, two uh, programmers from Uppsala mm -hmm. who wanted a meeting because they had a, uh, a booking site for they had built a booking site for 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 cars like car rentals mm -hmm. uh, and I had a meeting with them and I said well uh, maybe uh, it, this is quite difficult to monetize but maybe we can do something something else like together because yeah. I really felt that they were like they seemed to be like super super uh, good yeah. programmers uh, so I said let's let's uh, let's do something some something else let's mm -hmm. do maybe something with hotel bookings yeah. and and like travel and stuff like that and within like 15 minutes basically we uh, came up with uh, with the idea of Trippers and uh, registered the domain name and, uh, and they went back home and built the first prototype and mm -hmm. came back a few days later like okay here's the first prototype <laughs> and then we're like okay. and you were like oh I don't have to do any coding yeah so, so the idea was that they were gonna do most of the, yeah. the coding and I was gonna be more of the like the spokesperson yeah. or yeah the, kind of like that um, and then uh, it felt Really, like an like an, an interesting concept, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, participated in Seed Camp in mm -hmm. Stockholm last year, and it turned out like investors were like super interested in the concept as well. So um, yeah, and then we got we got a seed a seed we got seed funding, and uh, and, and uh, we may I dare ask how much? Yeah, so we uh, raised uh, five hundred and sixty six thousand euros mm -hmm. in the seed round mm -hmm. uh, yeah so that's roughly like seven hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars or five million Swedish yes yeah, yeah. yeah which is quite a lot for a Swedish startup. Uh, it's uh, depends on what you compare with like it's not for biotech but for a web no startup. yeah it, it's it's I'd say it's, it's quite a lot for a Swedish like web startup but if you compare it to uh, London or uh, New York or San Francisco, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a fairly small yeah. seed round yeah. still, yeah. I'd say, like, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's not small, but it, but it's not big either. No. So, yeah. so what's, what's really disruptive with, uh, trick birds? Because uh, there's a lot Yes, there's, there's a lot of, like, travel social sites. travel yeah. sites, uh, it's really interesting, so, what, what you have is, you have TripAdvisor, uh, mm -hmm. mainly. That's like a fantastic business. Uh, and Spam Factory. Yeah, well, I mean, they, it used to be owned by, by um, Expedia, yeah. that has Hotels.com. Yeah. But they spun it off, they made an IPO mm -hmm. last November. So it's its its, its own company now, and it's yeah. valued at four and a half billion dollars. So it, it's, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big company. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have that, and then you have and then you have like all the, uh, then you have like, uh, like hundred almost like small social travel or like small travel startups that are aiming to become sort of the next mm. TripAdvisor basically, mm. and we are in a sense like one of them. Yeah. Yes. Um, so uh, social travel has been like there's a, there's been a, a bunch of there are a bunch of like social travel. Uh, websites where the uh, idea is to to build it with with social at its core because um, like TripAdvisor is they have like some social parts and that they are really working a lot on, on yeah. becoming more social but there's still like really room for a, for a, like a, like social first uh, travel yeah, website. I think that, that yeah. a lot of the older com uh, internet companies they have a really hard time sort of switching from this 
I mean, peach view yeah, I mean, model to uh, more recommendation social. It's 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 hard to do more than one thing yeah. really really well. well. Yeah. So I think that's the uh, and yeah. So I mean, they don't want to leave their working model to try out. I mean, so you know, I mean, but uh, the innovators' dilemma. Yes, definitely. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and um, so the thing we're doing, that the TripBirds is doing, is we are uh, aggregating check-ins from many different services. So we're sort of adding a layer on top of existing uh, social services like Facebook and Foursquare and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And the idea has been to add more services. So, yeah. uh, so we know where you and your friends are on Facebook, and we know where you and your friends are on, on Foursquare and on Instagram, and we aggregate that. To, and then we add a sort of a, a travel layer on top of that, so we can say that you know, if you want to go to Berlin, for example, we can tell you like which of your friends have been to Berlin, mm -hmm. like hotels they recommend, uh, things they did in Berlin. We can like easily ask them for recommendations. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't have to sort of build a new uh, presence in a in a manner. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, and I think that the big thing that sort of separates us from the other social travel startups is that we are really thinking of this as, a, as like a, a value add on the existing services. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. so you don't have to check in on TripBirds. No, you know? exactly. I mean, because yeah. that would be today. That would be like, oh, okay, another check-in service. Yeah. That's yeah. that's stupid. But uh, a lot of people have been adding like information to Facebook and to Foursquare, mm -hmm. and they're adding pictures and Instagram, mm -hmm. and we sort of make. Uh, we create some meaning of the, yeah. the historical like yeah. stuff that you have created on those services because mm -hmm. the interesting thing is most of those services are or all of them actually are they're focusing on what's happening right here and right now mm -hmm. so check-ins on, on, on Facebook for example is called nearby yeah. like Facebook nearby so it's what's happening right like nearby and right now mm. and Foursquare is mostly the same thing it's yeah. like radar it's like what's what's got what's hot yeah. like close to me right now so what we're doing is the opposite it's like what's what's good that happened like far away in yeah. the past in yeah. a sense like yeah not too far away in the past mm. but still like far away is more interesting than, than nearby yeah. for, for, from our perspective yeah yeah sure yeah. going to uh, like yeah, Sista which is pretty close to here is not that much of a trip no, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so what's your your big challenge right now? The big challenge is getting the virality right. I mean, and getting the product right is is uh, is difficult. I mean, making a viral product is, mm -hmm. I think, uh, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, I've been used to create sort of products for that are, in a sense, like built for Google. Yeah. And then you build for an algorithm, and it's it's pretty straightforward. Like mm -hmm. you know, you know what you have to do, and then mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen in a sense. Uh, but when you're building for, I mean, people? for real people, <laughs> yeah, you're building for for Facebook. I mean, yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. I think that's I think that's why it's it's so much more interesting to to build for to build for 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 Facebook. Mm -hmm is that you are creating a service for real people and uh, it's uh, but it's also a bit it's hard to know like what works and what doesn't yeah. it's it's hard to i would also say it's it's a bit harder to iterate mm -hmm. on facebook than on google like mm -hmm. if you're driving traffic from from google you can you can just do i mean it's easier to do test different things yeah on for an algorithm and see what works best but you can't really test different things on it's 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 more difficult to like mm. throw out concepts at people because yeah. I mean if it's the same people they're gonna get tired of you if you're yeah. like yeah and also we've seen especially on on Facebook so a lot of applications that get really spammy yeah and you're sort of suddenly one day just flooded with this never ending river of invitations to a certain yeah, like uh, branch out. Branch out yeah. is the big example. <laughs> yes, branch out is the was the spammiest. Yeah. And, yeah, but and people get really turned off by that. Yeah. Branch out is still. I think it's they're quite successful though. Yeah. But I think they had 
they had a, like a spam peak, and then mm -hmm. now I don't think they're as spammy anymore. No, I don't know, but no. but they got like 20 million users or something mm. doing that, and then now they're maybe a bit more serious. Mm. So that's not um, it's not it's not necessarily a, uh, from a business perspective. Uh, I think it's a good. I think I don't know what, how they're doing, but uh, yeah. do you, do you think there's a <laughs> risk that Facebook will start, for instance? monetizing these kinds of apps and, and deciding that you should suddenly pay them for for using their ecosystem for using their ecosystem uh, no way no. I, I, that would be crazy actually, because mm, the goal for for Facebook is to uh, in a sense like become the web mm. right uh, so they want like all the websites in the world to be based on on Facebook you know, it's it's a whole ecosystem, like mm -hmm. you say. So it would be really stupid if you start like charging for for being a part of that mm. ecosystem. That's that's that that would be really a bad idea for them. Yeah, there there are so many other ways that that Facebook can can monetize. Mm. Like uh, for example, like introducing like ways for all the people in that ecosystem to do payments, for example, yeah. or or you know. With, with other kind of risk, do you see with building on top of other people's ecosystems? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, it's... What should I say? Well, I mean, uh, it's it's quite... If you create your own data, I mean, mm -hmm. you... Uh, it's it's much easier to to uh, to work with than if you're building on, on, on data, especially like we are doing. We're building on, on many different sources of data that mm -hmm. is differently modeled in different places and then we have to sort of merge that data uh, that's quite hard and um, and Facebook changes like all the time actually there's been a few like huge huge changes on the like in the Facebook API yeah. just in the last year yeah. when we've been building this that yeah. building tripwords so, I, I so that's, to, that's, that's, to that's definitely a, a I, I, I interviewed Rerav's founder and he told me that the day before they were going to release their beta, the entire API changed. So yeah, they had I mean, that's, that can happen for sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, we were super scared, like in, was it August last year, when all the tech blogs were writing that mm, Facebook is shutting down, uh, they're shutting down uh, Facebook places. That's what all the tech blogs yeah. wrote. Yeah. They're shutting down Facebook places. Uh, Luckily, I mean, it was just they like all the tech books just got it all wrong. Yeah. I mean, they didn't. They just sort of rebranded it, and, like refocused, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and now it's like uh, it's even more about local than it was before. But but they sort of um, yeah, they just rebranded it a bit actually. What what's but, uh, yeah. what what trip uh, what's at uh, what, what stage is Tripbirds right now? Uh, what should I? What stage? What do you mean? What, you what can I? What can I choose Vita, from? Or are you oh. launching? Or are you public? <laughs> we're we're always going to be in. We're in. We're in public. <laughs> public beta. Yeah. Public beta. So it's a beta. It's it's probably going to be a beta like forever for for a long time or forever. Yeah. And um, I mean, it's it's the idea of not being in beta. I think it's a bit strange mm -hmm. because you want to be like yeah, constantly yeah. like uh, working on the product. Uh, and but we're public, so anyone can anyone mm -hmm. can join. Yes. So do you see that you're building for um, for for a long-lasting company, or are you looking to get acquired by, say, Foursquare if you're successful? Or do no, you... um, that that would be a bit. I don't I don't know if anyone really thinks like that because it's a bit strange. In the valley, they do. <laughs> Maybe they do. They yeah. build to get acquired. But it, it sounds a bit. <laughs> Strange to be mm -hmm. like, oh, we're no. Of course, you. I mean, the goal is to build like an amazing product that can stand on its own. Mm -hmm. Yes, that. Yeah, that. Uh, I would m much prefer like having. I mean, building. Yeah, a, a great company mm -hmm. than than just flipping something. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really that interested in in flipping. <laughs> in flipping. Ah, in flipping. <laughs> in pivoting. <laughs> yeah. So so. Um, Seed camp. You were there. Uh, you attended 
last year. Yep. Um, there's a lot of buzz about Seed Camp in mm -hmm. the European tech scene. So, what did it give you? You you got a great interest from investors. Uh, did seed, you win? Seed, seed Camp was fantastic yeah. for us, did actually. You win, I, I can uh, totally recommend. Yeah. You asked me about Seed Camp before, and yeah. I, I totally recommend yeah. Seed Camp. It's, it's, it's great. It's really good. Good mentors, good good like concept. Yeah, yeah so it's 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 really good. Um, and so. And you give up? Is it six percent of the company? No. Or? Okay. So yeah, you you can, you can win seed yeah. camp, and then you give up a small percentage, yeah. and then you get some an, an investment mm -hmm. from seed camp. Yeah. And uh, seed camp is initiated by by uh, a few different like VCs and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so we didn't win. And actually, I'm not quite sure who won, <laughs> but it's not really about that, that much mm -hmm. about winning. Yeah. Actually, I'd say it's more about meeting because all the investors yeah. go to seed camp, and then you get some great feedback from from the investors, and you get to like, yeah, you get to meet investors and and mm -hmm. uh, and sort of see what works with the investors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you, it was quite easy for you to raise this and first round, you would yeah. say. And also what's good with yeah. Seed Camp is that you sort of have to put yourself in, I mean, you, have to, they, they're, you really have to create like a strong pitch yeah. for Seed Camp. It's, it's really important that you, that you can really pitch your product. Mm -hmm. And when you go through that work, it's actually quite good for you as well because yeah. you really have to sort of like, okay, so what is the core mm -hmm. of what we're doing and stuff. So it's, it's good. And um, yeah, so we met a bunch of investors, and uh, uh, there was a lot of interest. And then I went to London mm -hmm. for um, a week and met with with uh, some more investors, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, we were quite lucky. I think we we could pick from uh, like a handful of different mm -hmm. investors and and choose the ones we wanted. Pretty much. That was how, how much do you think your your own personal background with having both sold companies and created several successful sites beforehand uh, played into this interest? Um, I, I think uh, the team is super mm. important, definitely. I mean, it's very, very important. It's something I would, I would look more at the team than at the idea mm. because you can change an idea quite easily, but changing a team is probably much harder. Much harder, yeah. yeah. So look at the team. It's it's, it's a, the best mm -hmm. recommendation. Like if you want to do an investment, like yes. So don't and, go and then, So you're saying don't go to seed camp with just you and your pal who don't have really a team. That's pretty useless. Mm, that's I mean it's that's hard to. Uh, Prepare. Yeah, I mean it, it's. Um, it's it's good to be a, a good team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what what else? What else? Um, I lost my. Uh, Sorry. Uh, no. Um, uh, okay, so one thing also, I mean, that's really um, what's really what the uh, what investors are looking for right now, and what they were looking for a year back is, I mean, they're looking for things that have the potential to. Um, like you know, building on Facebook, mm -hmm. becoming viral. Mm -hmm. I mean, viral loops, uh, social, local, mobile, yeah. uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, uh, yes, but um, especially I mean the the social. I mean the the viral stuff. I mean if if you have a if you have a, I think it's it's almost like difficult now. I mean it depends on what kind of startup you have. But if you have like a consumer startup, mm -hmm. without. You know, without some a component of like Fire. how it's going to fit into yeah. Facebook and, and you know and, and Twitter or something, then it's it's strange yeah. today. Yeah. yeah, because it's yeah. So so, what are your goals? Are you going to stay in Sweden, or are you going to take your wife and your kids and move abroad, or? Um, so you... yeah, so so Chipperts is like as a as a product has nothing to do with Sweden at no, all. It's it's no. a it's a global like product for for anyone. Uh, who is you need a Facebook account yeah. to log in so that's that's the only limitation mm, but and we're based in Stockholm right now and I think we're gonna keep being based in Stockholm I don't think we're gonna move the whole company mm -hmm. anywhere no yeah. but sure if it goes well then it would be great to have like an office in, in San Francisco or 
New York or Berlin, maybe, mm. or Asia. London. <laughs> London, Asia. Mm, I'm not sure. Like, okay. it, it, like so, we're building a lot on Facebook, so it, it's it has to do with like where yeah. Facebook is big and stuff as well. Yeah. Everywhere, but it's China, like like China actually. maybe mm. isn't maybe yeah. isn't that that big like a. It's market actually, for us. I actually it's, it's read some statistics. It's bigger in Malaysia and Indonesia mm. per capita than in the West. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Foursquare has been seeing like a lot of growth, and and they are seeing they are seeing like a lot of growth in yeah. in Indonesia, like mm. the 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 English speaking part of uh, of, of Asia, like yeah. Indonesia and the Philippines and Malaysia, yeah. and uh, I guess yeah, that's that's what you can see. Yeah. I did that. Uh, India. Yeah, India. You can check out like Google Trends and just like yeah. type Foursquare and see like where it's where it's trending as a search term, yeah. and then it's it's quite hot in Indonesia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what's the most important lesson that you have learned as a uh, entrepreneur? Um, 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 that's difficult, but uh, I guess it's important to really narrow down your like your your product and focus on like one single thing mm -hmm. that's the most important and then like um so um so i uh, i founded this event called 24 hour business mm -hmm. camp which is like sweden's largest hackathon yeah. and um you develop a, a website or like a Prototype. Yeah, yeah, like a service and, and a prototype for a service in, in 24 hours, and I think that's a great exercise. Actually, mm -hmm. I think I can I cannot stress that enough. I think you should go on a hack hackathon like that, like maybe four times a year, just to practice. Yeah. I mean, the, the the interesting thing is that when you only have 24 hours, you really have to focus on like what you can do and like, focus on like one single thing and just yeah. making that single thing like well oh, mm. yeah and and if you can't like uh, and if things get too complicated then you have to throw things out mm. instead of like spending more time on it because the, the time is limited mm. and I think it's, that's a great exercise um, for, for, a, for a startup as well because it's for any type of web startup it, it's easy to sort of like just grow and grow the yeah. scope yeah. and and you know, spend more more time and money on it. So so, uh, so uh, having that having yeah. that kind of mindset yeah. is, is great. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should probably have been like, uh, we should have been maybe integrating that mindset even more into trippers yeah. as well. Like now, I, that's something I see that should maybe have had like maybe a bit more like that kind of hacking, like hackathon mm -hmm. sort of. Uh, I mean, Facebook is is really working hard on maintaining, you know. That kind of culture. Yeah, that yeah. kind of culture that, mm -hmm. you know, they, they have hackathons yeah. and, and they sort of like, yeah, innovate a lot through these hackathons. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's your, your, your best advice to other entrepreneurs? Apart from going to 24-hour business camp. Yeah. Um, apart from, yeah, apart from that, um, I mean, the, the first like the first rule of, uh, I mean, if you have an idea, I guess. I mean, if you're at that stage, mm -hmm. is to talk about it as much as possible and don't try to. I mean, I think don't think don't think that it's unique because usually it's not. And but on the other hand, like don't think that it doesn't have to be unique. That's not. I mean, there are like. Probably like no unique ideas, like purely unique. Most of the things are just combinations of old ideas, like in a new combination. And you can uh, also say if an idea is completely unique, like it might be a reason for that. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it, it's the probably isn't there. it's probably yeah. It's it's a bit mm, yeah. Be careful about <laughs> <laughs> about yeah. But um, so that's uh, and and talk about. It. I mean, talk about it. Get feedback on it and iterate on yeah. the idea as well, and try to really like focus and, and narrow it down mm. instead of like adding more things to it. Uh, yeah. We we talked a bit about like TripAdvisor and the big companies who have a big yeah. hard time of adjusting to to the social times we live in right now. Mm -hmm. What's your advice to big corporations that you have learned through your 
your uh, career as an entrepreneur? Oh, that's, um, I don't have, I don't think I'm in a position <laughs> to have any advice for big companies. Uh, maybe, um, I guess, like big companies in Sweden. This is not advice, but but um, reflection. Yeah, and a, a reflection. It's it's. I think in in Silicon Valley, uh, the big companies have their eyes on the small companies yeah. a bit, and they are buying like small yeah. companies who are doing like interesting innovation. And I think we don't really have that culture in yeah. in Sweden. I mean, there are no. I don't know if like Ericsson. Maybe they do. Maybe they do acquire small tech startups. I think it was a long time but, ago. Yeah, and um, I guess like you could say that the media companies like Schumstedt, they are, they are sometimes like acquiring uh, small startups and stuff. But I don't know. So maybe that's maybe that's my advice. Like yeah. if you can't do like innovation like in house, then maybe uh, it would be interesting if if there if there was more of an ecosystem for sort of that in mm. Sweden in a sense. Yeah, uh, I, I mean it's yeah. it's a pity that our good startups or great startups actually get bought by mostly North American Yeah, companies. yeah, they do. I mean, yeah. they, they do. I mean, and, and that's, I mean, we live in a, in, in a like, in a globalized world, mm -hmm. so it would be strange if, I mean, of course, it, it's great. You can sell to Facebook, yeah. you can sell to Google, you can sell to RIM, or you yeah. can, like, uh, you know, so. Apple. Apple. Yeah, we have, I mean, there's two companies of, now. Yeah, which two? C uh, Technologies, uh -huh. Malin Shopping, and yeah. uh, Polar Rose. Polar Rose, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it would be strange. I mean, of course, it's, it's great to sell to one of those, but it would, I think it's maybe an advice for, for, the, for the big companies and, and uh, in, in the Nordic, in the Nord, Nordics. Do you, to, do you yeah. see, because I've seen now that we see also a, a lot of American angels and VC companies yeah, coming true. to Sweden and yes, looking for yeah. the really, really yeah, and it, small startups. It, it, it makes total sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course. I mean, of course, you're gonna have. I mean, so we have three uh, VCs, mm -hmm. uh, three investors for for Tripwords, like uh, yeah, VCs, and one of them is is Kandum in Sweden, yeah. and then we have Index and Passion Capital in in London. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I mean, that's. I mean, advice. If you're if you're a startup in in, in in Sweden, I mean, don't just look. At, there's no. It doesn't make sense just to look at like Swedish investors. I mean, go to London or take a take a trip to San Francisco. I mean, yeah. Berlin. Berlin. Yeah. yeah sure. Um. So so, uh, do you have any advice? Because there's lots of, not a lot of Swedish companies that have been e as easily funded as yours. But do you have any advice regarding the whole process that you want to share? Um, I think, I mean, don't aim for the, the, the funding. I, the important thing, uh, it's not necessarily... I mean, try to build a, 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 a... If you can, try to build a prototype or even like a first version of... Mm -hmm. Or even like, I mean, try to go as far as you can without yeah. getting an investment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 much much better. I mean, it's better for everyone mm. if you can wait mm. as as long as possible. And uh, yeah, uh, so that's that's my and advice. To show it's not just ideas and yeah. Fire. I mean, yeah. You, 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 there, there are no uh, like uh, VCs that are interested in, in in investing in companies without a prototype no. to begin with. I mean, so just having an idea is like it, it, you're not gonna have anyone invest in that you have to build you have to prove to to the investors that you can build it mm. yes and um, and also I mean you want that you want all the investments to be at as late a stage as mm. possible like and I mean if you can avoid even having getting doing having people invest in your company I mean that's the that's the bad that's the best but today thing. We'll or if you can choose like yeah. okay so now we have you know we have revenue or you know we can decide if we want to take an investment or not, but it's, it's But it's today to we us. also see that companies who do get investments get a lot of PR and press from it. Yeah, it's it's true actually. Mm. It's nice. It's it's interesting. Yeah. But again, I mean you shouldn't over uh, emphasize that. over emphasize the PR and press mm. as well. I mean even if you get like covered by 
Mashable and TechCrunch and uh, the next web and uh, whatever. It's don't expect that. I mean, it's fun with with that kind of press, but it's not necessarily like a game changer for yeah. your for your business. Um, what's your opinion of the current startups being seen in Sweden? It's um, it's really. It's really happening right now, actually. Mm -hmm. It's it's really bubbling. I mean, this spring is fantastic. There's like a, a bunch of great events coming yeah. up. There's like hacker events and uh, Stockholm Startup Hack that we're part of, yeah. and Health Hack Day, and we have Match and Hack, and we have a 24 Hour Business Camp, and we have uh, um, Geek Girl Meetup, and we have. I mean, there's there's uh, there's a long list of yeah. things that. I mean, it. it and it really feels like uh, the media in Sweden as well is sort of waking up to, mm -hmm. to like writing about startups and uh, I mean uh, I think it's hopefully we've, we've only seen like the beginning of it uh, so what I'm hoping for is that we're getting like a like a, a broader sort of grassroots I mean um, I mean it's sort of a pyramid where like Spotify and Mojang yeah. and there's like a few others that are like on top of this pyramid and naturally, like all the, the media and stuff, they want to focus on that kind of yeah. companies and the investors and that, that, all that stuff. But what I think is like the most important is the, or the most interesting is like What's the happening? bottom, yeah. the bottom layer. Like how can we plant seeds so that we get sort of new people, like new entrepreneurs coming into mm -hmm. this ecosystem, like having such a broad base as possible of, of people coming into this pyramid. Mm. I, I think that's the, that's the big challenge for 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 Sweden and for Stockholm is like yeah and and yeah uh, and that's the most interesting to me is like making sure that there's like a huge talent pool yeah. and and people want to go into startups instead of working for Ericsson or or like Telia or I, I don't know what great word last words <laughs> and uh, they put up the put on the music here now so yeah. I think we should uh, say bye bye yeah. and thank you yeah. so much for listening to you Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.